Hi, my name is Eddie Rainier, and we're about to finish up the last section of our kitchen cabinet painting project. But before we do that, I want to show you a little trick on how to turn your base cabinet door into a recycle bin or trash bin area. These hinges are secured with a Phillips head screw. So with a Phillips head screwdriver, unscrew your screws and then remove your door. In preparation for our drawer glides, we're going to go ahead and pack out the inside of the cabinet to flush out with the front fascia. On the left side here, it's a quarter of an inch. The right side is a little different. We're going to have to pack that out 5 eighths of an inch. Now we're going to measure from behind the fascia to the back wall of the cabinet, which is 23 and 5 eighths. When measuring the opening, we find that we have a 21 inch height and the width is 10 and a half inches. It's now time to find that perfect trash can for your recycle bin. Whatever size it may be, make sure you have at least an inch clearance, top and bottom, side to side, front to back. It's now time for an eddy quick tip. Go ahead and grab four pieces of 1x3 stock, cut them the same size, and now screw them together on the edge to form a corner. Do that twice. Now you have two corners. And what you do is screw down these corners to your workbench. And now you have access to an easy place to cut some scrap material. Okay, let's get started. We went ahead and cut this piece of 3 quarter inch ply down to 12 inches by 30 inches. Plenty more than what we need. Now I have the drawer hardware and that's calling for a half inch clearance in between the actual drawer and the opening. And our opening is 10 and a half inches. So 10 and a half minus an inch is 9 and a half inches. So we're going to go ahead and rip down this piece of ply to 9 and a half inches. We could do all of our cuts off that cutting jig we just made. But since we have a table saw, this will expedite the process. So we measure nine and a half inches from the fence to the blade and make our cut. Our drawer glide measures about 19 and three quarters and it's a 20 inch drawer glide. So I want to give it 20 and a half just for a little clearance. Make that mark. Grab your framing square. Mug it off and cut it down. With plywood, it's always a good idea with a piece of sandpaper to clean up your edges as you go along. Now, screw one side of the plywood to our working jig, then the other side, and then go ahead and screw down the other side of the jig. Now you have a safe work area. I marked F for front of the drawer, and then grab your trash can, turn it upside down, and center it side to side, front to back if you want. We decided to favor the front. With a framing square, go ahead and square up that mark. With a sharp pencil, trace out the top of the can to where it meets the plywood. From that trace mark, we're gonna go ahead and measure in a quarter of an inch all the way around the outside radius. To do that, we're going to use this little marking tool, which is also a battery, but it will give us the quarter of an inch we need from the outside trace mark to the inside, which will be the lip that the trash can actually sits on. On the ends, the inset's a little deeper, so I'm going to measure in an inch and an eighth, that way it'll sit nicely on top. Go ahead and square that mark off. Now I'll carry on with that quarter inch inset on this one side. Same thing with the opposite end. Go ahead and measure in an inch and an eighth, make a mark, and square it off. Now carry on with your quarter inch inset. To make this cut, we'll start out with the drill and drill out a hole a little bigger than the jigsaw blade, and then go ahead and make our cut. When using your jigsaw, make sure you have a nice sharp blade and take your time to make a nice clean cut. Now go back with your 120 grit sandpaper and clean up your opening. Now let's go ahead and unscrew that new can holder Slip it in and see if it fits. It looks nice. So what we have here on the back of the door is 20 and a half inches, which is plenty because the actual opening is 21 inches. So if we take the height of the waste bin, 
that's 18 and a half. Subtract that by 20 and a half and you get two inches. Two inches divided by two is one inch. So we'll go actually one inch from top and from bottom. Now square up that mark. So now that we know that this will be the top of the actual drawer unit, we're gonna go ahead and pack up the sides with some supports, three quarter inch pine. So what we'll do is we'll cut that at that mark that we have an inch in. So actually it's 18 and a half minus three quarters, and that'll give us 17 and three quarters. Now make your mark at 17 and three quarters. Square it up. Now grab your saw, and with this saw, you can use your square as an actual fence to get a nice square cut. Now we'll cut one more piece, same size, and these two pieces will act as vertical supports for our drawer front and top. Now we'll attach one of those vertical supports to the drawer top. To do that, we'll go ahead with a countersink bit and then follow through with the screw. Make sure your corner is nice and square. Again, start out with your countersink pilot hole drill tip, square it up, and screw it together. Notice I put this together on a couple pieces of scrap. It gives it more room to play with. In between the two vertical supports, we have eight inches. From our one by three material, we'll measure out eight inches, square it up, and cut it out. We will need two of these eight inch pieces to attach to the back of the door, top and bottom. Start with installing the top one by three, flush with the back and the sides. Now we'll use our piled hole countersink bit and prepare for two screws on each side. Mount that second eight inch piece to the bottom as well. Now we turned this door into a drawer. That structure that we just built, I went ahead and tacked on the back, just temporarily. I centered it side to side and top and bottom. And then I grabbed the waste bin, put that in there, and then actually walked upstairs and I tried it out. I put it in there to make sure it fit and it fit real nice. Now we'll go ahead and take this apart, glue and screw the structure to the door, and then we'll go ahead and mount our hardware. Before you take it apart, trace out the outline of where the drawer support meets the door inside and out. This will give you a reference of where to put your glue and of course where to reattach. Unscrew the support from the door and now grab a piece of 120 grit sandpaper and just give the back a light sand which will help the glue to adhere. Clean off all of the dust. With your wood glue, give it a healthy bead all the way around inside your marks. Remount your wood support to the door Make sure it's exactly on its marks and then clamp it down gingerly. Now is the time to double check and make sure everything is exactly on its marks. The screws are really only to hold it in place until the glue dries and then the glue is the actual adhesive that will hold it all together. I wanted the screws to get a good bite on the door and secure it down so I put them in on an angle. Whenever possible, clean up your glue when it's wet. It's a lot easier to clean up when it's wet than when it's dry. When using drawer glides, always follow the directions exactly. Every one's a little different. But with our case, we're gonna go ahead and flush out the top track to the top of the actual structure and hold it off a quarter of an inch back from the inside of the door. Next, mark out two screw holes, one on each end, and this will be a reference for your pilot hole. Make sure you use a drill bit that's smaller than the actual shank of your screw. Line it up, pop in your screw, and tighten it down. Now reverse and repeat, and do the exact same thing to the other side. Line it up, mark out your holes, drill your holes out, and screw your track on. Now getting back to our base cabinet, we had to pack out both sides to flush out with the fascia. The left side was a quarter of an inch and the right side 5 eighths. So now we're going to go ahead and set up our saw 
And first, cut out our 5 8 inch backing strip. This is a very delicate and dangerous operation, so make sure that you never get your hands close to the blade. Always use a piece of scrap to keep it square and tight. Since the saw blade isn't high enough to cut through the whole thing, flip your piece over and finish your cut. Now we'll finish up with our quarter of an inch backing strip. Now we need to get a hard measurement on where the inside track is going to meet for the drawer glide. Measure from the bottom of the structure to the top of the track and we get 19 and 5 eighths. To center our new drawer with the opening, we only had to measure up a quarter of an inch of the overall height of the inside structure and that's going to give us 19 and 7 eighths. Go ahead and make that mark on both sides. Go ahead and square up your mark. Now let's get a measurement for a quarter inch backing piece. And that measurement is 23 and 5 eighths. Go ahead and make your mark, square it up, and cut it off. Now make a mark one inch down from your fresh cut piece. Now match that mark with the same mark that you made earlier on the side of the fascia. Grab your tape measure, and now measure up from the base of the cabinet to the bottom of that piece of wood, which turns out to be 18 inches. We'll do the exact same thing with the other side. To secure these two backing strips, I'm going to use liquid nails. That way I don't have to use any fasteners, and I'll put these pieces in and just wedge them in with a couple pieces of scrap. After letting those backing strips dry for 24 hours, now we can come back and secure our hardware. Now transfer that 19 and 7 8 inch mark across both sides. After finding proper placement for your drawer glides, mark off the top and two holes for your screws. Again, grab a drill bit for your pilot hole that's not wider than the actual shank of your screw. Drill your pilot hole. These stubby drill motors work out great for tight areas, and if you don't have one, you can always buy a 90 degree attachment. Line up your track with the holes and put in a couple screws. Same thing with the other side. Level out your 19 and 7 8 inch mark. Make your reference marks. Remember, when drilling your pilot holes, don't go too deep. Screw in your track. And there you have it, a recycle bin ready for paint.